yes uh, i welcome all the students of mcom to my second session of lecture especially online on the paper entitled training and development i am very sorry the reason being there is there was uh, some technical problem in the online system therefore the this, uh, this session is being laid by 15 minutes kindly bear with us yesterday i was talking about the different concepts of training and development and there are about i think 16 different concepts wherein i was able to touch upon the concepts to the tune of almost 15 in number coaching i was talking about in the case of the coaching as you know this can be applied to various uh, walks of life more particularly the the coaching in the educational institution and coaching in the cricket academy maybe the sports and games whatever through coaching i think the trainee can understand better as to what are the do's and don'ts so that you will be able to perform better any mistake in case the trainee commits that can be rectified by the so called the coach so coach will definitely create a good atmosphere for the trainees to undergo training relating to sports and games the uh, the education maybe the second pc the degree or masters including the competitive examination i think we, most of the students are very familiar is with that probably the last uh, concept is vestibule training what is that vestibule training vestibule training is provided is being imparted to the trainee in a situation similar to the actual condition it is not actually the actual but the environment or the system of the training is being created which can be equal to that of the actuals for example a pilot officer a pilot in the aircraft he can be given training in a vestibule training which is this also known as simulated system of training as you know the the cost of the aircraft runs to almost uh, say hundreds of crores and uh, no training will be allowed to get into the aircraft unless a complete training period is over the training may be about 6 months even more little less there may be a program also because it's a system of education and the training and development is also part of it and uh, if you can go to bengaluru airport uh, bengaluru airport international airport there is a training school what is called vestibule training school meant for pilot officers especially who can be ready who can be definitely able to take up the driving task of the different aircraft uh, as soon as the training period is over successfully as i told you in the case of the vestibule training it is an artificial but not a real when, the, when there is an artificial which is equal to that of a real then you know the the trainer can and trainee can definitely get into it they can see every operation and make them understand make them conversant with and thereby they will have a lot of confidence in gaining knowledge skill attitude including the behavior probably the next important topic of this particular paper is competency what is this competency competency is a combination of knowledge skill attitude which are very important especially to perform a job you know in any but in, in any particular job the behavior of the person the employee is very important if in case you find the an employee with the combination of knowledge skill and attitude which are very much important for the performance of a job for improving the performance in which case it is called competency competency development competency development 
based in the form of knowledge, attitude, skill, and other important issues, other important characteristics, motives, values, traits, and self-confidence. Motive is very important. You know, the values are equally important. The traits of the person is definitely very important. And self-confidence without which the fellow will not be able to conduct, any, will not be able to perform any job. And anything being done by the person without confidence, there may be a lot of errors in the products produced by the person concerned. And you know, competency development definitely enhances the workforce skill and it reduces the frustration in employees and strengthens the team for higher performance. As I told you, it's very important for the workforce. When, when you say that you have got very good competency, I'm sure the level of skill will be very high. When you say that your competency level is very high, you will have no frustration, whatever. You will definitely enjoy with the confidence. And finally, I tell you, all these are very imperative uh, for the better performance of the work assigned by the employer from time to time. This is an effective way of providing the right learning and training for building a highly responsive. This is equally important that anybody should take note of it. Well, what are the types of competencies? You know, without competency, probably an employee can be at a stumbling block. And he has to gain knowledge, skill and attitude. All of them should be combined together, which increases the behavior. And finally, that will enable the employee concern to perform better job as expected, maybe according to the benchmark. What are the types of competencies? The types of competencies are, number one, the technical competency, second, behavioral competency, third one, functional competency. What is this technical competency? In this particular case, knowledge and abilities are very much required to perform a particular specific job, maybe the technical related job. The principles or procedures are required to be followed without principles, without procedure, in case the procedures laid down for the purpose is not followed, I think action cannot be done as expected. Right? This is a point to be remembered. And in the case of the technical, the tools, equipment, machinery should be definitely employed at the workplace. Without tools, without machinery, without equipment, well, technical related job can never be completed. This is a point. For example, the mobile. Well, in case you want to uh, repair a mobile, probably one should have a competency, what is called technical competency, and the fellow concern will be able to repair the mobile, maybe handset, maybe spot phone, whatever you can speak about, uh, using the appropriate tools, equipment, and the machinery, so that the, the defects in the particular instrument can be definitely identified and solved. But the most important point is, in this particular case, the procedure and the process which are necessary to be followed should be, should be definitely adopted, maybe in sequential manner, otherwise it will become a problem. What are the examples? Example, as I told you, you know, uh, the, 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 the systems, you know, the computer, for example, the laptop. Your laptop is under repair, let us say. What are you going to do? He will consult one, uh, the technical expert, the person who is called as the, the, the system manager, a system operator, system engineer or whatever. You will contact him and he will be able to identify and that fellow will be able to give you whatever the advices require. In case you want to undertake or you want to participate as a trainee under systems manager, well, the, the fellow concerned will have to tell you in detail, especially about the procedure and the process as to what are the do's and don'ts. And another important example is the data analysis. You know, you might collect various data, maybe about the taxation, maybe about the finance, maybe about the marketing, maybe about the, 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 the what you call the computer knowledge, literacy of the computer knowledge, right? Maybe the logistic, maybe supply chain management, maybe what you call the human resources. 
and whatever the data that you collect relating to all this are required to be analyzed in which case the data analysis is very important the skill relating to data analysis can be definitely learned by you under this particular case this is another important thing and even coding skill is also equally important you know examination you might take examinations right it may be either coded or non coded if it is coded well it has to be coded it has to be and a bar code should be fixed and afterwards it has to be removed and then you must identify the the real identity of the candidate for which the coding skill is absolutely important this is another the second important point is the behavioral competency what is this behavioral competency well, well this is more of a soft skill soft skill is very very much important this is the reason being it is called as a general competency and this speaks about the personal characteristics let me tell you with the soft skill your behavior will be definitely increase your attitude will definitely be uh, on the higher side the communication and relationship management communication you know you have to communicate to the people various procedures are required to be adopted for the purpose there may be barriers to communication which you need to overcome relationship management well it should be customer relationship it should be student relationship it should be well it should be what you call the superior subordinate relationship that should be definitely followed with utmost good care team work well the uh, uh, some work is to be performed by a group of people it cannot be done by an individual in isolated environment so obviously the group of people should be involved to perform a job which is called as the team work problem solving any problem relating to the country relating to a particular uh, branch of study maybe the medical science right you know for example a, a small girl aged about almost some uh, you know 12 years hailing from jharkhand her name was you know uh, aishwarya right the that particular girl had four legs and four hands no a normal person will be having only two legs and two hands whereas in this particular abnormal case what happened the girl had four legs and four uh, hands two limbs were considered to be extra and the, the health condition of the poor girl was also not good then incidentally the girl belonged to the very poorest of the poor family and in on the advice given by some people on the advice given by the sponsors what happened the parents took her to various hospital and every hospital said it is not possible to cure the disease of this particular girl finally they stepped into bangalore and there is one hospital called sparsh hospital sparsh hospital and you know there was a group of doctors the group of doctors have conducted thorough investigation on this particular girl and finally you know the surgery was done surgery was done you know especially in a live telecast and everybody were were completely amused to look at this particular surgery conducted by a doctor called dr sharanna and this is more of a problem and problem can be definitely solved provided there is uh, the behavioral competency this is another one leadership is equally important you know without lead for example election will be conducted election as it i was as i was talking to you yesterday the election for the state of karnataka uh, will be conducted on 10th and the results will be probably out on 13th of may what happened a leader should be identified for the entire state of uh, mysore district every district will have a leader to uh, to take care of the uh, elections and all deputy commissioner he is the uh, leader for it he will be able to give proper directions to every subordinate so that the work is being conducted without any hassle is another important point and you know adaptability is another one critical thinking well well using the, the soft uh, skill well people can definitely apply their mind in, in a different especially in a complex environment they can understand what are the do's and don'ts what are the issues and challenges and thereby they can come out with the solution time management is another one time management yes time you know a particular job is to be completed in just 60 minutes let us say well your examination will be conducted only for about 3 hours you are not even 1 minute will be given extra 
you are required to complete it. That's what is called. If you are able to follow it, and if you are able to answer all the questions, especially emphasizing on quality, you know, in three hours, this is what is called time management. And you know, the people will come right at 10 o'clock and go back at 5 30. Well, whatever the work assigned by the superior, you must complete it within the time. And that is all required only through, uh, that can be done very effectively through soft skill. This is another one. Functional competencies. What do you mean by functional competency? Functional competency is about the job, a particular job, right? And a branch, particularly, you know, uh, when you talk about uh, discipline, you can say the branch of study. When you talk about branch of study, maybe the finance. Finance is a branch, human resources is a branch, marketing management is a branch, the information technology is a branch, computer application is a branch, then uh, and various other things, including the taxation, you know, accounting, and many more. And, you know, when proper analysis relating to the stock market is done, this is what is called the functional competency. You know, stock exchange is so volatile. Sensex, yesterday Sensex, it was only around 60,250. You know, a few days ago, it was uh, it slumped to about almost 57,000 uh, index. What happened? If it is down, what are the repercussions? If it is up, what will be the consequences? But I tell you, if at all it is down drastically, the investors will be losing money heavily to the extent of several lakhs of crores. On the other hand, if it is increased, I don't think, you know, the Sensex will shoot up all at once. It will be increased gradually, in which case I think the mobilization of wealth, conservation of the wealth, otherwise net value increase of the shares and uh, shares can be definitely observed is another important point I think to be remember. Well, competency are into three main categories. What is this? What are those? Otherwise, you can say there are many. Very first and foremost important is the core. What is this core? You know, core competency is one which cannot be imitated by uh, the competitor of other companies. Right? You know, I tell you, uh, we have got a good uh, core uh, competency. This cannot be what you call imitated. If at all it is imitated, this cannot be appreciated, right? And Karnataka State Open University, the core competency of the Karnataka State Open University is what is called the self-learning material. Self-learning material, other universities cannot have it. So we have developed the study material in the form of SLM and that is a part of the core competency. Good customer services, yes, we provide services to the students at large, maybe within the time fixed. The grievances have been reduced drastically and high quality products. Yes, our study material is definitely very good. So I would say our study material is a product also. When it is very good, it is what is called the core competency is another important point to be remembered. Then what is this cross functional? Cross functional, it is more of, you know, I am in finance. For example, you take up a B.Tech graduate who has completed IIT from Madras. IIT Madras is very strong in computer application. At the same time, the fellow concern is also equally strong in the finance. Otherwise, the budgeting. You know, my core area is uh, the technical. In case I have got uh, the competency on the area related to commerce, this is what is called cross competency. Cross functional, that is, I would like to put it across. Then functions. What are the functional uh, competency? It, you know, competency in functions, it could be competency on sales, marketing, accounting, research and development, computer knowledge, training and development, and business planning, tax planning, and many more. This is all about. Then, what are the, in, in the competency model, the focus will be given on attitude, knowledge, skill, and behavior. The model of the competency will have number one, as I told you, it is about the attitude, second knowledge and the skill. If they, you put together, it is called KSA. K stands for knowledge, yes stands for skill, A means attitude put together and that will definitely bring in radical changes in the behavior of the employee. This is another important point to be remember. Then coming to four I mean, five core casual competencies. What is that? Self-awareness. Yes, 
this competency speaks about the personal emotions of the person concerned you know self awareness this reflects about the personal emotion of the concerned person self management self management is the ability to regulate emotion and and behavior and uh, that is another important social awareness i have got the competency to understand how people will be behavior behaving otherwise behaving in a group that is what is called the social awareness then the relationship skill relationship skill i think i as i was talking to you it is in the form of a communication then you must be in a position to communicate very clearly listening you must have you should listen to the people and uh, you must be in a position to cooperate and if at all there are any pressure comes in you should be able to you should be able to uh, resist is another important part and if there are any conflict you must negotiate and try to overcome is another important point to be remember and so this way i think the core competency otherwise competency will come up one by one what are the benefits of performance and uh, product right uh, you know what are the important of the benefits of competency competency development these are the important uh, benefits the important benefits are first one is better performance see you have a very good knowledge skill and attitude that will that will bring him radical transformation in the behavior in which case well you you as an employee can perform your work better this is the point when every one were, were undergone training were enriched themselves with the competency well their, their performance will be definitely super and the quality will be very high defects will be less no accident whatsoever time management will be followed in which case productivity will also be shot up will also be in a position to increase drastically this is another important point yeah. and the next important point is well well career progression the people the train in the people who have got good uh, competency they will definitely uh, they will be able to get promotion to the higher rank from the lower rank periodically maybe say once in 5 years once in 10 years without any hassle but let me tell you in case you have the core values core capability core competency i'm sure the management will have to consider your application for the upgradation of your position from lower level to higher level one the second one is once you become an officer once you become a part of the management well your condition will be definitely change the reason being earlier you are a non uh, non executive today you will become an executive thanks to the core competency otherwise competency of the employees concerned this is another important point and probably the next important issue is one second please excuse me yes so vertical mobility will be very high vertical mobility is more of a, a progression progression in the sense the upgradation upgradation is nothing but what we call the promotion from lower rank to higher rank the, why promotion will be considered in your case the reason being people are otherwise management will always look at your competent competency development if you are really competent on every issue maybe the technical maybe the functional maybe something else the behavioral in which case i'm sure your case will be definitely considered for the progression career progression or whatever is another important increase in engagement and retention employees who have enriched themselves with the competency well they will be completely engaged their services will be utilized by the organization optimally suppose i lack in the competency in which case my 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 skill my capability my ability cannot be deployed at every stage and you can uh, i will be able to say under utilization both optimum utilization over utilization under utilization will have their own problem but optimum utilization it will be very ideal 
and that is what every organization will suggest rather embrace the optimum utilization optimum utilization if at all you see i'm sure the production will shoot up quality will be very good there well the team spirit will be there organization culture will be superb then organizational environment will be very good no conflict whatsoever compensation will be very high right and uh, i no 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 dispute among the uh, people concerned no collective bargaining is also not required but let me tell you every employee will feel that you know i must win i will also make the organization to win this is what is called win win situation and when you talk about the retention the capable people competent uh, employees will never leave the organization without any reason suppose an employee having competency in case he leaves i think that should be properly uh, highlighted that should be properly digged out uh, by the management of the organization where the fellow concerned was working and organization should try to understand what are the reasons for uh, quitting even as you can even say put it in the form of turnover put it in the form of attrition and they have their own negative impact so therefore i think retention will be very easier employee can be retained provided they have got very good competency this is another important point favorable hiring decision and lower recruitment cost you know uh, when you talk about the competency a top level uh, multinational companies will always go to iits and iams as you know there are 23 iits 23 iams spread over in different parts of the country in karnataka iit is located in dharwad triple it is located in what you call raichur probably uh, iim iim is located in bangalore and you know the top level companies at the global level are at the global level they come to these institution and look at or observe the competency of each and every student who have completed the btech program otherwise you know any bachelor's degree for that matter but including uh, the professional well you, uh, uh, most of them will be able to convince uh, with the uh, prospective employer saying that we are definitely fit to, to take up any kind of challenges especially in the job market so i think such people will be hired without any con uh, without any confusion there will be no chaos chaos whatsoever there will be a lot of uh, procedure being followed in spite of that i tell you the candidates who have completed their graduation in iim and uh, iit they will be uh, they will be having cake walk especially at the time of interview and their uh, pay package will be on the ir side this is another important point and what is the recruitment cost and let me tell you the people who have got competency they will definitely take part in the interview right and uh, you need not have to find out uh, you need not have to uh, find out the micro related knowledge skill and attitude by conducting a separate uh, what i call written test otherwise the practical examination that may not be required so the the recruitment cost will be apparently less enhance organizational effectiveness competency and organizational effectiveness will always go hand in hand and uh, this is what the situation what are the differences between the training and development is a question let me tell you ladies and gentlemen the point is probably i i must have forgotten to tell you the word training is derived from one particular word called train train you know when i talk about the train we quickly uh, rec quickly recall whatever the train that was launched by the honorable prime minister especially in bangalore sikandarabad and many more places in india that is what is called vande bharat express vande bharat express the word training is derived from the word called train train as you know a train yeah, you must have a very good experience traveling on board right and you know train will move from one station to another when it move from one station to another for example vande bharat it leaves mysore at about uh, almost 1 o'clock right it reaches chennai by about 7 o'clock and you know it's very good experience for the people to travel on board correct but you know in between it will give stop from mysore it will give stop at bangalore it gives stop in some other place in bangalore many place many people will also board train 
but some of the people who have boarded train at Mysore may alight at Bengaluru. May alight at Bengaluru. This is a point. Other train, you know, Kachiguda Express, it gives stop at every stage from Bangalore to Kachiguda, which is located in Telangana. And at every stage, you know, uh, the new passengers will board the train and some of the existing passengers will alight. That means, even in the training, at every stage, an employee will have to learn new knowledge, skill and attitude. Periodically, he has to update himself with the latest development of the knowledge, skill and attitude. That's very important. And some of the knowledge may not be required, in which case he has to, he has to forget about such knowledge, what is called de-learning, right? Learning, this is a concept. Second one is de-learning, whatever that we have learned may become redundant, may not be important, in which case you have to forget about it, what is called de-learning. In, in some other case, what happened, some people will have to recapitulate whatever the knowledge and skill that they have gained in the earlier stage, in which, uh, that is what is called relearning. So in the case of the learning, you can come across three different uh, concepts. One is learning, second one relearning, third one is de-learning. Learning, anything that you acquire after it is learning, anything you have uh, made an attempt to recapitulate because such knowledge, skill and attitude are very useful in which case it is called, it is called uh, a real learning. But when you say that this particular knowledge and skill is completely absolute and that will become what is called, you know, day learning is another important point. Now, having understood, well, uh, the, the, the meaning of the term, the training, let us quickly understand what are the differences between training and development. Training is a short term, yes. The reason being, training can be conducted in three days, seven days, 15 days, up to the period of 180 days. Any knowledge, skill and uh, this thing you gain, and uh, up to the period of 180 days, you can call it as what you call the short term training. And, and uh, th this is what it is. And uh, training is a short term, and, and the development is Definitely, yes, it's a long term. It is a long term. And training is a short term process. The short term process, mobile, for example. I think anybody can understand the, 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 the procedures relative to repair and maintenance of the mobile in just three days. So, process will be very short. But in case of the development, it is a continuous. The reason we, you know, Deputy Commissioner of Mysore, Deputy Commissioner of Mysore will have to undergo development on a continuous basis because Whatever he enrich himself will be useful to the society. Until the end of retirement, he has to learn uh, various important uh, for the development of himself and development of himself will be a development to the society also. This is another important point. Training is practical. Practical in the sense it is more of a hands-on experience. Whereas the, the development is only theoretical, philosophical and logical. What is this logical? Any problem that has come up is to be resolved, is to be solved sequentially without any kind of any problem, any pinpricks that you encounter is to be addressed. For example, the communal problem will come. Don't you think it is the responsibility of the deputy commissioner to address it? You cannot simply keep quiet. You know, there may be uh, some suicide uh, committed by a farmer, in which case the deputy commissioner should quickly intervene. And an attempt made by the uh, former to commit suicide can also be averted, provided uh, the deputy commissioner has got the skill to avert it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. It's a summer, obviously, yes. The person who teaches will feel thirsty and the you know, mouth will also get dried up. So, for, uh, in, uh, for, Seldom I take um, what you call a, a sip of water, can be there with me. And you know, uh, training is practical and the development is only theoretical. Uh, you know, development is theoretical. Theoretical in the sense, he has to learn everything. Disaster management, for example, he has to undergo. That's more of a theoretical. And once he enriches himself, he has to come here. In, if at all there are floods during the rainy season, the deputy commission should go over there 
and make every arrangement to rescue the people who are being affected there, especially by the flood. Otherwise, the life of the people should be definitely very, very precious. That has to be properly guarded. That is the responsibility of the Deputy Commissioner, in which case I think development will play a very important role. The training is for only the people who are able to work on nature, correct? Whereas the development is for executive. Executive in the sense, the, the managerial, professionals, such people only should undergo this kind of a process. Training is reactive. React, training is reactive. Yes, there's a problem of the, what you call, uh, just now, I think uh, the, uh, my, my young colleagues belong to the department. They, 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 they have opened the laptop. They found that there is some glitches. And the glitches, is very, the glitches became a major impediment for the teacher like me to start the program right at 11 o'clock, although I was ready. But the system did not cope up with the challenges, in which case, immediately the person who has got uh, expertise in this particular field was summoned, the fellow concerned came, and he was able to resolve the problem. So therefore, it is what they call, it is a reactive, reactive in the sense, it has problem has happened now, and it is to be attended. Development is proactive, proactive in the sense, you can't imagine whether it's going to come. You know, you have to predict something is going to happen tomorrow. You know, something may happen, you know, maybe the communal violence, maybe the floods, maybe the, uh, some other landslide. You can always uh, guess and employ measures to avert the crisis. So that is what is called proactive. And you know, in case of the training, uh, it, it will help you to develop what you call additional skills. In case of the development, well, the total personality will be definitely increased. The deputy commissioner of my uh, police, maybe a deputy commissioner of uh, Mysore district, right? And the commissioner of police, you can always see their personality is always on the higher side. The reason being, they have undergone so many, uh, uh, so many problems. They have undergone uh, so many uh, process and they have understood what are the do's and don'ts thereby they are able to employ measures to address the problem without any issues. This is another important point. Next, the training meet the present need of the employee. Well, whatever the present, for example, there is some problem of the uh, electric uh, mobile. Electric mobile, not, not electric, but let me tell you, electric moped, two wheel very recently, you must have come across, correct? And uh, there, uh, there are some uh, the fires, fire which was actually broken, and fire accident took place where the moped was completely burned because of the fire accident. You know, as uh, upon seeing this particular incident, the organization concerned, the company has summoned the concerned person, uh, maybe what you call the production manager, and the proper direction was given. Production manager in turn called upon his colleagues, the employees, the workers, gave all hint, conducted a thorough investigation where exactly the problem lies. One particular micro related problem was identified and that was repaired today. I think such accident is being reduced. This is the this is an account of the training given. So that is what is called to meet the present problem, yes, training is required. Well, in case of the development. Uh, well, uh, for the future requirement, future requirement in the sense, landslide will take place in Mangalore tomorrow, maybe in some, on some other day. In which case, I think the deputy commission should get ready to ta tackle such problem. That is what is called the preparedness for tomorrow. This is another one. Well, training, uh, training can be organized by the management. But tell, let me tell you, development can be definitely managed by each individual at the top level. The people working at the down level, attender cannot do anything, but the vice chancellor can definitely do. Registrar of the university can definitely do. Registrar evaluation can think about it because he has to conduct examination in different parts. So therefore, it is more of a personal, but not this thing. It is more of an individual, right? The next important point is vocationally oriented. Training is vocationally oriented. It is more of on the job. But let me tell you, the development is off the job. The reason being, it is theoretical, 
it is logical sequential and again philosophical philosophy philosophy is equally important to be pondered over is another important point the training is more of mechanical and technical whereas management development is theoretical and conceptual which i already told you a mechanic who can repair a generator you know a mechanic who can repair but uh, 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 who can repair generator is definitely yes he is uh, he has to undergo training correct he is a better person and compared to the engineer the engineer might not have so much of knowledge the reason being they might not have undergone the, the training for the period of maybe uh, relative period but definitely yes the education level of such people is always on the higher side this is another important point but let me also tell you engineer may not be better mechanic mechanic uh, mechanic especially on the generator but but a mechanic uh, of the generator can perform very good the reason being mechanic is a part of the training but engineer is a part of a development this is what i think anybody can say now having understood all this is the time for us to uh, just look into look into what are the advantages and disadvantages of training and development the important advantages are first one employee retention employee retention can be definitely improved. yes if you look at the infosys the employee attrition of employees is not on the higher side it is always manageable unless there are a specific reason right the people who quit the organization are few in numbers the reason being the training you no know, they have spent lot of money on the training and development everybody enrich themselves with the requisite knowledge skill and attitude and the level of confidence is on the higher side they perform job very systematically assiduously and judiciously so therefore i think there no reason they can find that to quit the organization therefore it is uh, the training is a best measure gamut for an organization to retain talented employees this is the point yes second one is employee engagement see if there are hundred employees all of them should work there is no over utilization there is no under utilization under utilization will be a big burden on the exchequer over utilization will result into fatigue over uh, this thing you know over utilization will result into fatigue and that has to be definitely addressed in which case you know employees should be properly engaged if they are engaged i think all of them can work in a team spirit they can share the knowledge skill and attitude and finally they will see to it the best quality of the product is brought out and which will in turn results into the higher productivity and this is the point more productivity what do you mean by more productivity yes when there is a training given to the employees concerned the production will be defect free product will be defect free no normally you can find that no flaw no fault in the production and all the product all the product produced by the organization is as per the benchmark when it is as per the benchmark probably yes the production will be always on the higher side the sales will be up productivity will shoot up and finally the organization will be always giving smiling not only in the eyes of the local market but also in the national but also and international this is another important point to be remember the next important point is boosted employee morale what is this employee morale yes let me tell you employee morale is equally important the training you know maybe up to the period of 6 months you know, for example you look at this you know statement of the employees right employees will undergo training periodically as and when new concepts comes in new challenges are ahead well the training is very important and every bank particular statement of india has created its own infrastructure for create for transmitting knowledge skill and attitude by the trainer to the trainee this is the point right and you know when people undergo training well they will enrich themselves with the of knowledge and skill and the level of job satisfaction will be very high and thereby they perform job with all concern including the level of confidence is another one suppose employees are not trained what happened job morale will not be there well lot of mistakes are being committed and when mistakes are happened yes 
the uh, fellow will become a big liability on the exchequer of the organization concerned and such people should not be tolerated by the management they are telling us this is another one and you know the training is a consist uh, a consist work process regular training and development opportunity increases uniformity of work process right and you know everybody will have to follow only the procedure the the, the procedure adopted process being followed and if they are able to adopt or follow the process or the procedure relating to the technical or there will be something like right in which case i think yeah and, uh, they will be able to understand and they can use uh, at the workplace consistently this is another important point less employee supervision is another important point less employ people who have undergone training see people who have undergone training well uh, they don't expect any kind of supervision by the top managers and supervision need not to be present because the trained employees can perform better the work assigned so in which case i think the supervision charges will not be there unnecessary supervisors need not have to be hired so the people who have undergone training who have enriched themselves can perform the job even in the absence of the superiors otherwise the supervisors so the cost of supervision will not be there in other words this is one of the methods to reduce the cost of production well the training you know all those who undergone training well the level of confidence will be on the higher side and the knowledge skill and attitude will be will be changing by them according to the necessity according to the challenges in which case they, they the competency of the people will shoot up their behavior will be very good and they will become an asset in which case i tell you their application will be considered for the upgradation from lower position to higher position promotion will be given when promotions are given well family will be very happy the reason being well the financial condition will be increased the esteem will shoot up right reputation of the fellow concern will shoot up respect will also be increased automatically this is another important point and those who have undergone training i tell you they will not commit any kind of mistake therefore no wastage at all for example the people who work in ksr dc karnataka state road transport corporation correct lot of buses thousands of buses are there more than 50000 buses are there in different parts of karnataka let us say a driver is not given training when it is not given proper training with the knowledge peripheral knowledge that he or she has gained let us say you will be put into action you will drive the vehicle and meet the accident what happened the driver will die and the property in terms of the uh, uh, property in terms of the bus will be completely ravaged and people traveling on board will also die uh, uh, death is definitely a big problem and in, in which case i think it will become a responsibility for the ksrdc to pay compensation huge amount of compensation to the family members of the <coughs> bereaved party and the people who have lost their life you know their family members will get compensation so in which case i think it will become financially big burden this is another important point so when there are no accident today i think the case of this is also has also created the good infrastructure for for giving training for which i think the training schools have been established training schools have been established when training schools are established let me tell you accidents will be reduced and again uh, one particular person can manage in one bus in which case he is not only driver but also conductor he issues tickets to the to the passengers who travel and he will also drive the vehicle without any complaint so this is another important point that to be remember and the next important point is company the people who have undergone training will have a very good knowledge about the policies and the and, and goals right a uh, company policies company policies and procedures including goals they are completely acclimatized with them. when they are completely acclimatized i think there will not be any kind of problem when they are good in uh, the, uh, the the company policies probably no employees will commit any kind of mistake they remain loyal also the better working environment yes 
the people who have undergone working, have undergone training, well, 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 can can see the positive culture. When there is a positive culture, the morale will shoot up, productivity will go up, business success is unavoidable. Is another important point, right? Improved technology proficiency, improved technology proficiency, right? And people who have got very good uh, knowledge, skill, in, especially in the technology, well, they, they level of proficiency will always be on the higher side. Productivity will be up, effectiveness, innovation, efficiency, all are very important. Then those who have uh, enriched themselves through training, they can contribute to their own might to the productivity. Uh, 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 you know, they will contribute their own might to the productivity. More the pro productivity, I think, uh, yes, the, uh, the reputation of the company will always shoot up. Reputation of the company will always shoot up. For example, Reliance. Reliance, they have started, you know, Geo. And they are planning to get into the fifth uh, uh, series, especially for the mobile. Fourth is over. Fifth, they have entered in and all of the employees who work for Geo are highly committed. They are highly committed. When they are able to work, they also undergo training very frequently and thereby their contribution and for the reputation is on their side. This is another important point. More effective on board, right? And you know, they also attract a lot of talents from other parts. They attract a lot of talents from other parts. You know, when they are able to attract a lot of talents from other parts, yes, the talent will become a very useful to the organization. They can perform better. When they perform better, well, the, obviously, the quality of the product will be very high. Sales will increase. You know, the profitability will show up. Should up. The productivity will go up. Liberate will be definitely bulked up. Debt equity ratio will be trimmed. So this is what I think anybody can speak about. This is another important issue I think to be remembered. So what are the disadvantages of the training and development? <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, let me take uh, you know, a minute to have a cup of tea. Yes, dear students, having understood the merits, advantages of the training, right? This is the time for us to understand what are the disadvantages of the training. I think there are three important advantages are too many. When you look at the advantages, I think advantages overweigh the disadvantages. Therefore, it is obligatory, it becomes very important for every organization to go for training and development. But still, let us try to understand what are the, the what you call the disadvantages. 
the important disadvantages are higher cost the cost of training will be very high you can say why it is small company will not be able to bear small company having only 10 members if they are not in a position i uh, know the superiors otherwise the owner so called sole trader they themselves can conduct the training periodically in which case there will not be any kind of problem but when you talk about the, the companies of medium size even the big uh, law scale for example infosys for example the police department for example the transport department the ksrc correct and even you know, when you talk about the, the army agnivir agnivir right is another defense personnel lot of people lakhs of people have been employed maybe across the country maybe not only at the micro level but also at the macro level in which case what happened it is the responsibility of the organization concern to create a very good state of the art infrastructure as i was talking to you yesterday infosys by spending several hundreds of crores they have created a beautiful infrastructure exclusive for conducting training of its own personnel and you know uh, seldom the people belonging to other organizations they can also go and take part in the training being conducted by the professionals of the infosys and you know a big building uh, big buildings you know the residential accommodation have been provided for and you know the malls mall mall in the sense the shopping facility has been provided the transportation local transportation has been created very right? state of the art infrastructure including ict enabled services information technology communication enabled services have also been provided if you look at uh, the police academy every district will have their own training center for police the police uh, at the down level they are being recruited very frequently hundreds of people thousands of people are appointed at the time <coughs> <coughs> if you can go to a place called chennapatna there is a police training uh, police training college if you can go to uh, some place you know you can find police university defense university is another one i think that has to be pandar goa then civil aviation civil aviation training school you can call it as vestibule something but it is at the large scale this is another important point railway university has also been created that's i think operating in one place called udhodara right in every case let me tell you very honestly and all those who have been hired who have been appointed by the concerned agency shall undergo training why it is the reason being a good infrastructure has been created but to create good infrastructure don't you think the railway the police department otherwise infosys including uh, the uh, 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 what do you call uh, the premjis uh, uh, the department otherwise even the world over um, you know e- excellent uh, performing multinational companies they have also created very good uh, uh, infrastructure for the training and development right and to create such infrastructure several hundreds of crores have been uh, committed out of the budget and it's a burden that's what many people are saying when they always look at the, they comp- they always make a comparison between the return and also the cost the return sometimes will not be expected as it uh, will not be expected maybe in the uh, in the beginning but definitely yes return will be expected only in the long run but the cost wise will be definitely higher every time they have to spend money except that you know once the infrastructure is created the investment may be one time of fire but to conduct other operating expenditure for the uh, the training right including the travel expenses obviously yes the cost of training will be very high so therefore many organization will be really scared of uh, you know creating their own infrastructure however they hire it they hire the infrastructure and you know and you know make make uh, see to it employees working under them are deputed deputed and the trainers will be hired and you know very good knowledge skill and attitude will be transmitted between the people thereby there will be no confusion whatsoever second important point you know the during the training training let us say it is conducted up to the period of 180 days what will happen to the people uh, especially the regular work let us say maybe from today onwards well most of the most of the people 
uh, government service people, they are engaged in the training. Okay, uh, maybe till maybe 13th, otherwise 15th of March. 15th of not March, but May. Maybe for about one and a half months. You, when all the people, at least 20-25% uh, of the revenue department, uh, maybe 25% uh, normally all of them will be hired. Uh, you know, the employees working in the, uh, the municipal administration will also be hired for this particular purpose. So obviously for a period of one and a half months, their work will be completely paralyzed. What will happen uh, to the general public uh, who expect the work to be done uh, immediately? I think this work will also be paralyzed. It will be kept in abeyance. Maybe up to uh, for a period of one and a half months, he has to bear with them. Right? So this is another important thing. When the people are away from the work, I tell you, during the period, the, the regular work will come to a complete halt. It will come to complete halt. This is another important point to be remembered. Then the next point is poor quality training can result into poor quality work. You know, when you conduct training and development, the trainer, otherwise the, the manager in charge of the training and development, otherwise the top person, executive, top executive, CEO of the training and development institution, they must have proper planning. When, if at all there are any disarray, you know, when, um, you need to identify the best content. You need to identify the uh, proper training design. You must uh, employ a very good trainer. You must make it a point to create a very good environment. If that is the case, I think the people, whoever comes in, they will undergo training and wherein you can find positive development. Output will be very high. Quality will be very high. Suppose uh, the manager concerned who are in charge of the training compromises with the quality, I'm sure the, uh, the people will not be able to upgrade themselves with their knowledge, skill and attitude. And after they go back to the respective place, they start committing mistakes and thereby the quality of the product will also be very defective. And quality will not be up to the mark. When the quality of the product is not up to the mark, let me tell you, and there will be no buyers. When no buyers, well, stock will be piled up and it will be a big problem, especially for <coughs> the organization. And the liquidity position will be completely affected very badly. This is another important point. <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, let me take up another important topic, what is called learning. Learning. Now, we have understood something about the training. We also understood something about development. Training is for the people uh, working at the, uh, no, at the, at the floor. I know the people who are working at the floor, you can call them as the mechanic, you can call them as people who consider to be Group C employees, right? Now, training can also be given Group B employees, but top level people normally they prefer to undergo what is called uh, uh, the, the, the development. When IAS officers, IPS officers will also undergo training, you know, after their appointment by the UPSC, remember? All of them will be asked to go to one place called Dehradun. And there is a wonderful uh, training center called Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute for Training of the Administrators. Administrator in the sense it could be either CEO or uh, what is IAS, IPS, IRS or whatever, right? They will also be given training. You know, the people who have completed the KPSC related class, uh, class one, in which case, they also undergo training in place like, you know, Administrative Training Academy, Administrative Institute, what is called ATI in Mysore. There are such facilities in different parts, maybe in four different blocks. Maybe one is in Mysore, second one Bangalore, third one Belgaum, and fourth one is probably Gulbarga. So these are the things that I think you can see. Then, now you can try to find out what is this learning. Now, when you talk about learning, you as a trainee can learn something in training. One. Second, when, uh, when uh, you are a participant for the development, right, you can also listen to somebody and you can try to learn. This, this is another one. Third important point, now you are all listening to me, correct? And uh, whether good or bad, I communicate. I will not be able to observe any one of you. The reason being, this is the major impediment. 
And uh, suppose I come across people, uh, the students, face-to-face -face communication would be very, uh, very, very enthusiastic, uh, right? And now I will not be able to see people. As a result, I don't know whether you are able to, uh, you are able to make out uh, whether uh, the lectures are being delivered. And in, uh, since uh, my lectures are being delivered, well, you will have an opportunity also to learn. So learning can take place in training, learning can take place in development, learning can also take place in education system is a point to be remembered, right? Learning is, learning development is perhaps very important and vital part of the human resources development also, right? As I told you just now, employees will learn, employees working in the police department, employees working in the State Bank of India, employees working in the Indian Army, Agrivir, otherwise Agnipat, correct? And in the railway department, maybe uh, the airports, airports, all such people will learn something, right? And they are part and parcel of the human resources development, uh, human resource management. Without learning, remember, there, there will be no growth whatsoever, right? And the development will not take place as expected and the organization will not grow phenomenally as desired by the top management from time to time. Learning involves change in the behavior. Let me tell you, when you learn something through training, I'm sure your behavior will be completely changed. I would say the positive outlook. One. Secondly, a deputy commissioner, otherwise police commissioner, who in case he undergone the, the development, management development program, MDP, whatever, right? He might go to a place like IAM Bangalore and take part in one program called disaster management, correct? Maybe for some time, correct? And you know, he will definitely sit for, for some time and he will be able to get, enrich himself. That is what is called the learning. And in all these cases, we find a positive change in the behavior. When there is a positive change in the behavior, I'm sure that will become a very useful input for the overall development of the organization. This is a point to be remembered. And you know, learning generally, a connotation of enhanced behavior. Behavior can be definitely increased from from one stage to another. If there is an enhancement in the behavior, you can call it as what is called learning. But bad habits, bad habits. I have learned the habit of smoking cigarette, that's not learning. This is a point. And I'm so prejudiced to other. I learned the art of prejudicing the other person, this is not to be called as learning. And stereotype, stereotype for everything, the same reply is being given. In the, that's not going to because there will be no positive impact on the on, on the development of the human resources, right? This is another one. And work restriction, work restriction in the sense, I will not create I, uh, a good conducive atmosphere for the working of the employees. Instead, I will become a barricade. I will become a barrier for the progress of the institution, or otherwise company, organization, otherwise industry. In which case, there is not. Uh, called as what is called learning, right? And learning should be very perpetual, perpetual in the sense should be continuous, right? And any temporary change in the behavior is not to be called as what is called uh, the learning. Permanent change should be observed and, and it should be perpetual, perpetual in the sense the continuous, right? And every time, you know, whenever you learn something, you should be able to practice. And that is what is called a reinforcement. Practice or exposure, if proper exposure is given, I'm sure you can prove your mettle. For example, you know, I, two, three years ago, I, there was some problem, I, I, especially in Kurga, and many houses have been completely uh, ravaged by the heavy rains, incessant rains, call it as the cyclone or whatever, correct? There was a big landslide. The deputy commissioner, one lady by name, I think I may not be able to recall very quickly, Joy. Uh, Joy was the IAS officer, she was the deputy commissioner. She had taken quick measures to avoid every problem and thereby I think after completion, many people belonging to Medicare, especially Medicare, they went to their house and touched the feet of the deputy commissioner who, uh, who was earlier working in the health department. I think that way, I, that way I think you can always see the experience really makes man perfect is another important point. Learning is something that begins but not ends. When you learn something, something will begin. But you can say, you can, after learning, you cannot say it will come to an end. No. This is a point which is to be remembered. 
and you know it, it's a process of observing and learning you know it's a process of observing acquiring knowledge acquire the knowledge then behavior and the style of behavior can also be uh, you know uh, taken out of skills is another important point attitude value preference preference that are new all these are considered to be the process which i think you need to learn through learning is another important point and you know i can learn by interacting with the people by interacting with the student like you you know i can also learn something is another important point and by looking at the environment uh, looking at the environment maybe i can go to a forest i can go to the city i can go to the market i can go to the uh, you know some shanty i can go to some what you call uh, uh, you know the car uh, jatra we can call it as correct huh? uh, the people lot of people will be throng over there i can see i can find out what are the challenges and you know if i if i am able to employ certain measures to avoid every problem not only at the micro level but also at the macro level i think that will be definitely bringing a complete transformation in the behavior and which is called learning it is an important point employee skill knowledge and competency right this is a process where employee skill knowledge and competency including uh, including the behavior will definitely play a very important role uh, to see to it all the people who have enriched themselves can perform better especially the work assigned by the organization from time to time this is the point to be remember you know i can share my knowledge with others i can also tell whatever the insight that i have i i i, I can express my own opinion to the people concerned and i can see to it you know whatever i have learned in the previous experience i can i, I can tell you you can also try to adopt the same which may become a very important input for you to uh, to to carry out the work uh, very systematically and judiciously so and then learning training and development learning training and development by and large are being used interchangeably in training we you learn in training in, in learning i think we uh, definitely enrich ourselves the knowledge skill and attitude even in the development they say therefore it is being it is being used interchangeably let me tell you but there are some differences which i already told you training aim that uh, training aim that training aim that the teaching immediately applicable knowledge skill and attitude to be used in a specific job right this is a point to be remember training may focus delivering better performance in the current role this is another one right and the development revolves around the broadening or deepening of the knowledge that i already told you this has to fit within one's personality development and one's personality development will be not for the present but for the future that's also development and you know and education is more of a formal way education is more of a formal way and to broaden one's knowledge for example mba otherwise mcom mcom for 2 years and this is more of a education a particular program wherein you enrich your knowledge with the skill knowledge <coughs> and abilities for a period of 2 years that's were part of education and education is often non specific and applicable for a long time as i told you mba otherwise mcom is for 2 years a post graduate diploma is for 2 years and a certificate program for 6 months and so on and so forth normally yes during the program i think uh, during a particular program uh, things are non specific you will uh, think rather it will be very generic especially about the business education and you know when you talk about the learning uh, there are four phases uh, to create effective learning uh, in order to create effective learning otherwise uh, in order to ensure effective learning development uh, you will be seeing four different process very first one an analysis of the training data yes you must find out why training is to be conducted if at all you want to learn something you must make sure that whether you require training yes if that is required you should be able to find out you should be able to conduct a thorough analysis you should be able to a 
in analysis of the training needs and you should be able to why the training need is important you must be in a position to analyze it properly then second important point is you should be able to identify what are the objectives specific objectives in case you conduct the training for example when you talk about the specific objective 10 percentage of the customers are be, being fly away is it don't you think you it is your responsibility to find out why people are leaving the organization what are the reason A specific objectives should be identified and uh, after identifying the specific objectives I think you must get ready to, uh, to, 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 to conduct the training and development. You must design the training content. What are the training content, whether training content will be good uh, or bad. That you need to identify very apt design of the training content. You must design the content carefully in consultation with the experts. What is that? Whether it is on disaster management, whether it is on the computer application, whether it is on mobile application, whether it is on online education, whether it is on what you call the, the, the what you call weekend classes, you know, all such things should be properly visualized, right? And that will come up in the training content and whether whether the counselors should be given proper training or not. People who take classes on the weekend, they must also be given proper training, in which case I think the training content should be properly identified. This is another important point. Then you should be able to identify what are the methods. You should be able to identify what are the methods. Methods of training, you know, it should be either on the job training, otherwise off the job training. On the job and off the job training will come up maybe at the subsequent level. You can kindly wait for some time. And after the training is over, proper monitoring and evaluation should be done. Once the training is over, maybe for about almost two months, three months, proper monitoring should be conducted. And the evaluation of such employees, whether after the training, whether they are able to perform better the work assigned by the organization and their behavior, everything should be properly evaluated is another important point to be remembered, right? Yes, the very first one in the model where, why the training is required, if at all you want to learn it, well, uh, there are four different phases, as I told you, and the very first one is analysis of the training need. You must identify what is the present knowledge of the employee's concern. Point number one. Point number two, what are the required uh, the training knowledge? What are the required knowledge and attitude, including the skill required? So that should also be identified. You know, these days, no company will be able to send employees only for the sake of only for the sake of name. No. The employees employees will be sent for training to acquire new knowledge, skill and attitude. Apparently all this new knowledge, skill and attitude will be useful for the development of the company, for the production of the best product. In which case I think the analysis of the training need should be playing a very important role. The analysis of the training need can be found out in the following ways. First one, organization analysis. When you talk about the organization analysis, organization in the sense, GEO for example, Reliance GEO, that's an organization, correct? You should be able to conduct whether this particular organization, in other words, you must conduct an analysis and find out what kind of training, in which case you must look at, look at the Reliance Geo specifically. This is what is called macro analysis, right? And you know, when, when, uh, when you talk about the macro, you have to see the entire operations, right? 
and this is about a very important issue and the second important point is function task or competency analysis function function in the sense a particular task competency as we already discussed task in the sense the job right when you say whether this particular job is doing the driver job for ksrc is it good or bad that we have to find out why why there are so many accidents especially in uh, in my you know karnataka sarige why what are the reasons for it there are a lot of breakdowns and you know karnataka sarige is not able to follow the time management what are the reasons that i think we should be in a position to find out this is what is called the task the driver the driver you he has to drive the vehicle within 3 hours nowadays i think the uh, the 10 paths road i think any driver for that matter you will be able to uh, you know take you people who are traveling on board maybe in 2 hours 15 minutes and you will definitely enjoy but in other cases normally because of the uh, traffic because of too many stops obviously yes the, the drivers will take more than uh, more than this stipulated time instead of taking 3 hours they take sometimes 3 hours 30 minutes so that in that you have to find out why the drivers what are the reasons for it in what way uh, the extra skill is required to overcome the problem this is another important point to remember probably the next important point is personal analysis personal in case of the personal a particular job whether who perform this particular job for example the i am the driver so many drivers are good but i am not in which case i must be summoned and find out what are the reason why i am a big failure in the work assigned so that should be properly found out so performance evaluation can be conducted for which i think personal analysis will be playing a very important role the second phase is specification of learning objectives the learning objectives should be properly specified learning objectives i tell you it should be uh, it depends on one 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 concept called smart s m a r t smart smart means s stands for you know uh, it is specific m measurable a achievable r realistic otherwise real and probably the t is the time bound so that means any objectives any learning objectives should should revolve around smart and what is that smart i think i shall be able to tell you at a later stage and you know and when we talk about uh, for the specific of learning objectives the ability to realize specific objective what are the abilities required to realize this particular objective that you have to find out what are the conditions required what are the conditions that one has to fulfill to achieve otherwise to gain otherwise to enrich this particular behavior this is another important point a specific and measurable training goal a specific and measurable whatever you have undergone the knowledge or the skill the attitude that you gain you know that can be measured also maybe when you attend the class some students will be able to score 100 out of 100 some students will be able to score excellent depending upon the case there are grades available you know a b c d this way right many people will be able to get grade b a and excellent will also be awarded so i think that should be taken note of this is another one then phase three designing of the training material and method when you talk about the training material and method i think yes this is perhaps very important what is the training material that you can give yes you can prepare a handout and give it to the people concerned identify the topic title right and uh, you can split the entire title into micro related after all this is conducted for a period of 10 days otherwise 15 days every session will have a different topics so that is to be properly identified from you know from simple to complex the topics or otherwise the content should be specially identified whatever the content that you identified should be sequential logical and it should pave the way for critical thinking also this is another important point to be remember and probably yes when the, when you talk about the training material well ict facility can also be provided online can also online support can also be extended there may be a lot of glitches in the online and you know extra care should be employed to overcome the problem of the such of such glitches 
So this is a point. <coughs> teaching methods. What kind of teaching methods? Well, uh, 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 the various methods are there. Well, uh, a teacher can come and deliver lecture. He can also take the support of ICT. And you know, you can quote some example. For example, leadership, right? When there is a leadership, there is one movie called Check Day. Check Day. That clearly speaks about the leadership, uh, the, the motivational level of the group involved for the purpose. So this is about uh, what you call the uh, the content. I think uh, you can always ponder over. This is another important point. And you can also identify who are the trainers. When you talk about the trainer. Trainers can be within, he can also be hired from outside. When he can be hired from outside, then obviously you are required to pay him the traveling expenditure, the accommodation for his stay, then, then what you call the, the daily uh, allowances, whatever, and that may become a big burden also. Some organization, as I know, like the State Bank of India, they have, their, they have created their own uh, uh, the trainers. You know, officers who have been appointed have, not the, have become the trainers, right? In which case, there may not be any kind of problem because they are all insiders. They know what is to be done. They, are, they know what are the do's and don'ts. They can transmit the knowledge very systematically and effectively is another important point to be remember. And, you know, when you talk about the methods, techniques, spacing, setting, many more factors, they are required to be decided. The training can be trainer center, otherwise training center. It should be either trainer centric, otherwise trainee, right? What are the important term? The, the trainer. Trainer centered in the sense, in this particular training, what happened? Only the trainer will play an important role. The trainee will have to mute themselves. <coughs> For example, a lecture, only the trainer will play an important role. The teacher or the students will have to just listen. In the case of the seminar, whoever present the seminar will play an important role. Others will have to give it. Probably at the end, there will be scope for interaction. Presentation is another one. Yes, a person who is given a task of presentation, he will come, spend about one hour, he will introduce the topic, he will uh, come out with the do's and don'ts. He will highlight what are the challenges ahead and come out with the suggestion as well. And finally, he will inform the audience to come out with the questions. Interaction will also be taken place. Lectures, as I told you, already told you. Keynote, in any particular function, what happened? A keynote address will come. He will deliver a keynote address, maybe for about either 20 minutes, 25 minutes, or even 45 minutes, depending upon the case. Right? You know, election, for example, let me tell you, when you talk about the election, and you know, as of now, another important salient feature of the ensuing election is that those who have crossed 80 years, they need not come to the polling booth, rather they can exercise their vote at the place where they are living. Now, it is a big responsibility, right? And it is the responsibility of the election officer to impart proper training to the, 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 the polling officers. Right, the presenting officer, they must be under specially, uh, you know, uh, such, uh, at least few people should be identified and they should be able to perform their task, whatever I said, you know. And the job description should be clearly mentioned, job specification should also be enunciated. And those who are able to fulfill it, they will be deployed for the purpose, and that uh, can also be related as a part of the trainer center. And you know. Uh, then lessons, lessons. We develop study material and we circulate it to you, uh, to you in the sense the students. Lessons, you know, it is more of interactive. A teacher will develop the study material. It is in the form of interactive. We supply it to you. You have to go through it, and you have to come out with any query in case uh, any 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 specific doubt which triggers in your mind. If this is another important issue. Training centered method. What are this? In, in the case of the training centre, there will be scope for interaction. Yes. What are those? A case study. When you know, a particular case will be taken up. For example, election. Election uh, related one particular problem will take up, right? There will be poll rigging. Poll rigging. In Bihar, so many cases have been uh, noticed, right? And that particular case will be uh, brought over here. They try to, 
they try to uh, speak about uh, uh, you know, what are the challenges, what are the problems relating to poll rigging. How then what are the measures to be taken up by the polling officer, otherwise preceding officer to avoid that kind of a problem. In what way police can support to these people to reduce such minas is another important issue. Role playing, yes, in the case of the role play, well, some of the students belonging to first year income, otherwise second year income, and I will identify X, Y, Z, Y will be asked to play a particular role, maybe as a manager, maybe as a finance manager. You have to come here and perform as a finance manager and you have to present a budget for, uh, in front of the group of people. And that if you do it, it's a part of the role playing. You know, Self-directed lesson. Self-directed lesson is an interactive, as I told you. I know I will develop the study material as if I am I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the students. It is self-directed. It is what is called uh, the interactive on-the-job training. Yes, when you talk about on-the-job training, some people will be will be will be will be, will be deputed to learn requisite knowledge uh, for which I think the practical will be conducted. Practical will be conducted. They have to work on machine throughout. And they, when they work on machine, some supervisors will be there. They will identify what are the mistakes the fellow concern will be committing. In which case, it is interactive. It is more of trainer, trainee center. And you know, simulation. Simulation in the sense equal to that of actual. As I told you, you know, vestibule training is a simulated uh, method of training. The games. Yes, any games that you do, you know, there will be coach. A coach will give you proper advices about the do's and don'ts. If you do it, I think I think there will not be any kind of problem. The learning can take place very systematically. This is another important point to be remembered. Yes. The next important phase is the monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring and evaluation is also a very important uh, aspects of uh, the learning. The evaluation of learning, the effectiveness of the evaluation of learning can be done by following Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is a very important point. I think at the end you will be able to see. And you know, there will be a chapter called Effectiveness of the Training and Development, wherein this Bloom's taxonomy will be definitely explained by the teacher's concern. And you know, in a day, student evaluation are also collected. You know, when, you, when the training is conducted, well, we raise question to the trainees. As a trainer, we can make out who is learning and who is not. Uh, periodically, some test will be conducted. And it is the responsibility of the trainee to give reply to all the queries raised in the question paper. And if you are able to score good marks, we feel you are, the, the level of uh, learnability is very high. This is what it is. And if there are any kind of problem, you know, uh, in the test that we are conducted, we definitely give you the bridge course. We also give you remedial coaching. But by conducting bridge course or remedial coaching, I'm sure the level of knowledge, skill and uh, attitude of the people concerned can be augmented stupendously is another important point. But let me tell you, uh, this evaluation is very important, uh, which will definitely help you uh, to make sure the, 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 the learnability of the training. There is one model called 70, 20 and 10. This model is developed by McCall. McCall, Lombardo and Hetchinger, the Center for Creative Leadership. And this fellow has developed it. What happened? 70 percentage, this model suggests or proposes 75 percentage of the learning come from work based learning. That means a trainee, suppose you work directly on mission, you know, the knowledge and the skill attitude will be increased to the extent of 70 percentage. This is the point. That means hands on experience. And suppose you listen to the teacher, it's more of a theoretical, not a practical. In which case, I think the learnability is not as expected. So if you take up a, a practical problem like in the accounting, otherwise the taxation. A teacher will work on the board. They will be able to resolve various problems. 
if they do it, I'm sure you feel that, you know, many intricacies can be definitely uh, overcome and uh, you will have greater opportunity to enrich yourself. So by working, I think the learning outcome will be increased to the extent of 70%. In other words, you can learn 70% of the content provided you work on a particular task is number one. Number two, 20 percentage, 20 percentage of the of the learning can take take place through development relationship. It can take place through development relationship. I told you. What is the development relationship? Yes, as an employee, you will have to interact with your superior. As an employee, you will have to interact with your peer. Peer in the sense your own colleague. As an employee, you are required to interact with your subordinate. So superior one, second, the peer, third, the subordinate. If you are able to interact with the people concerned, this is what is called the relationship. By interacting with all these people, the training, if they are able to interact with all these people, I'm sure the learning will also come to the extent of 20%. This is another one. And the final 10% of the professional development come from traditional course work, training in a formal education setting. Only 10% of the learning, otherwise 10% or uh, the 10% of the learning will be through the, whatever uh, the coursework that we are developed, you will be able to gain only 10% of the learning. This is what it is. Precisely, uh, if you work, you will get 70% learning. And any problem that you work, 70% if you practice, yes, it will definitely show up. If you are able to interact with your teachers, if you are able to interact with your colleagues, students, maybe your seniors, I'm sure 20% gain will be there. And the other 10 percentage, if it depend on the text, I think, yes, there will be what this is what is called 70, 20 and 10 percent model. This is another important point to be remembered. Then effective learning objectives. What are this effective learning objective? And as I told you, anything that you learn should have a specific objective. The objective should be encompassed by one concept called uh, in, in camp, uh, composed by one uh, concept called SMART, as I told you, S-M-A-R-T. Here I have said specific, measurable, achievable, result oriented and the last one is time bound, put together SMART. What is this specific? You know, any knowledge, skill and attitude that you gain should be specific, should not be macro. In other words, when you talk about the financial management, well, you can focus only on budgeting. You can focus only on the budget, let's say. You can focus only on the stock exchange related indices. You can speak about only the profitability, right? You can speak about the Indian accounting standards, right? If you are able to focus on Indian accounting standard and IFRS, that will be very specific. On the other hand, if you take up accounting as a whole, uh, accounting as a whole without uh, specifying the topic, I think the people will not be able to learn anything in the training. This is point number one. Second one is measurable. Any knowledge and skill that you gain should be measurable. You know, what is that uh, measurable? The students who have uh, undergone the training maybe for about uh, 10 days in the form of the contact program, their level of learning can be understood by the teachers for which I think the test can be conducted at the end of the program. Assignments, you are required to submit an assignment, but in the case of the assignment, remember, you cannot replicate whatever the study material that we have given. If you, uh, if you replicate it, it becomes a problem and such, uh, such papers will be viewed very seriously. This is probably another important. And third important point is the achievable. Achievable in the sense, see, achievable should not be like a monster, it should be a tiny, correct? And it should be, it should not be like a mountain like that. It should be uh, anybody uh, you know, from Mysore to Bangalore, suppose. Otherwise, from Mysore to Bangalore. In an ordinary situation, a driver can drive the vehicle in about 2 hours 15 minutes. That is achievable, yes. Thanks to the 10 path road uh, created by the central government under, I mean, the Indian uh, uh, I know, uh, Highway Authority, Highway Authority of India, National Highway Authority of India, they have created wonderful infrastructure and this is achievable. As against 2 hours 15 minutes, suppose you take 4 hours, it's your problem. This is one. 
Secondly, one day bar train, you know, one day bar train leaves at Mysore in uh, late at one o'clock and you will be able to reach what time? Earlier there was one train called Shatabdi. It used to leave at about one o'clock and was able to reach Chennai at about nine o'clock, uh, almost eight hours. Now it's able to reach in one hour, five and a half hours, six hours, something like that. So this is achievable thanks to Vande Bharat Express. This is another one. Result oriented. And the result, uh, whatever uh, the, 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 the learning uh, objective, you know, you should be able to get proper results. If you are not in a position to get proper results, I think this is not fit. Therefore, it is called R. Correct? Whatever the skill, whatever the knowledge, whatever the attitude that you gain, you know, using those, you should be able to produce good goods. If you are able to good, produce good goods, it's really fine. Right? And if you are able to reach, you know, from Mysore to Chennai by Vande Bharat, in about five hours, it is what is called the results. And uh, that you can save the time as well. This is coming under time bound. So, Vande Bharat can reach within uh, six hours, within five hours, whatever the time stipulated by um, maybe the South Western Railways located in Hubli. So, that is about the effective learning objectives. And you call them as the smart, smart in the sense the specific, measurable, achievable <coughs> results results for it that and finally the time bound is another important point i think one has to remember what are the importance of the learning objectives well you will be forced to look up look at this particular objective again right what is that when you design a particular objective well, you feel like looking at it again and again because it should be unambiguous. Second important point, should not be the, the, the objective should not be fatty. You know, all unnecessary things should not be dumped up, should be trimmed properly, it should be free from any kind of cholesterol. No fat can be added to it. And if it is slim, if it is very thin, I think it can be achievable. This is another important point. And the third important point is, Fall in line. You should be able to fall in line with the product. You must not go beyond. Whatever the topic that's given, you should be able to focus only on that. For example, the time management, for example, the soft, uh, soft, uh, you know, skills. When you talk about the soft skills, view how to touch only upon the soft skills. You should never go beyond. And the ultimate objective of the soft skill is to augment or enhance the personality development is an issue I think one has to ponder over. Right? And the other important point is, and you can provide opportunities to present a more rich and challenging learning experience for your students. That means, uh, when you talk about uh, the training, the trainer should come out with more and more case studies, correct? More and more examples. And examples should not be stale, it should be of contemporary nature. Right? What is going to happen tomorrow? I think, because the trainer can also be very proactive. You will have a very wonderful experience in the field where they are, they are working. So you can try to bring in very good cases and try to discuss with. This is another important point. Then the next important point is the trainers can be a guide, good guide for the students. He must be a good guide for the student as well. Is this is another important point. Then how do I write good learning objectives? Well, the learning objectives should be very clear, concise and specific. There should not be any ambiguity as such. So it's very uh, clear. Concise, simple, and you, there, there should not be any kind of complexity. And again, it should not be macro, rather it's only micro. A big topic can be split into very smaller topic. And this will become a specific. Let's not speak anything about the business environment. There are various. You must focus only on one. What is that? So the important issue is, you know, uh, the green gas house effects. How do you overcome the green gas effects, especially? What are the impacts on the society? Uh, whether, whether it creates a sustainability or not? And let me tell you very honestly, 
if proper initiatives are not taken up by the government uh, from time to time, maybe periodically, I think the country will have to suffer maybe in other two decades down the line. This is another important point to be remember. So I think this is how the objectives, the learning objectives will come. Now the time is up almost, uh, it's one o'clock. Uh, I don't know whether the teachers will be able to, the next teachers will be able to get ready or not. Hello, Ivrae. Where are you? I am next to Pasadena. I am next to Pasadena. I think students So I think uh, we have covered almost three hours. Yesterday I have taken one and now I have completed two hours. There, in the beginning there were some um, technical glitches. Despite of the fact that uh, we have uh, taken care of it, we have delivered, we understand there are some impediment hurdles, especially in online education. I'm sure the university will take up every measure to resolve or to address such problem based on your feedback. Thank you very much. And again, I will have one more lecture to be delivered on Saturday. And thank you very much for all your patience here. Thank you so much. Sir,